Good morning. I am live coming to you guys 7:40 ish in the a.m. If you are coming on with me this morning, say hello in the comments. We are ever so close to starting a new decade, a new decade. You know, I never looked at changing the years as um, important, you know, the change of a year as important, hey, Tanisha Darling, as I do now. Um, but I guess because there's a different urgency that's transpiring in my life and a greater understanding of my purpose. And so with each year that passes or comes about, I, you know, I'm always reflecting to see if I'm moving um, the way that is going to be in alignment with the things I feel I'm called to do or the difference I feel I'm called to make on the earth. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, Laura, uh, Tanisha, Shantez, uh, or Chantress, Chantress, listen, I wear reading glasses. I don't have them on, so... <laughs> I may be tearing something up, but not intentionally or not because the pronunciation of your name isn't important. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Do me a favor. If you're on the broadcast and I say something that helps your business or your life in any measure, let me know in the comments. Let me know by either tapping the like or the heart button. And most definitely do me a favor and share this out. There's a little button on the left hand side that allows you to share this out with someone on your timeline who could use uh, the message. You guys see in the title, I coached myself first. I coached myself first. Culturally, uh, we are known as uh, strong. Our, our race of people, um, strong is a word that's often um, equated to who we are. And the unfortunate part about that is that strong is often um, in collaboration or in thought with words like long-suffering or settling. I know that's heavy for this morning. But what I want to do, my goal for this particular uh, training or broadcast is to give you a soundboard for overcoming obstacles because we have them. You know, my pastor says life will flip on you. Um, and things that you might approach as you enter into 2020 and how to overcome them or even avoid them so you can keep pushing through. And so um, I was thinking about just us as a people or women really in general, um, are known as strong. And I want to make a, a line, a definitive line in what strong really means and what strong really looks like because our strong is often equated with suffering, long suffering and settling. Now I come from a line of women I, in my broadcast I did on last night on my business page, which is facebook.com slash build with Tanya, you guys hop over there when we finish. Be sure to like the page. You'll get notifications. I do trainings every week on Mondays and Wednesdays. But um, I come from a line of women, and I kind of talked about that uh, last night, who were, are very strong. And I think what has been mistaken is that strong means we got to suffer long in something or strong sometimes leaves us in a space of settling. So I remember someone making a statement that I was resilient, resilient. And, you know, we hear words and we can, you know, put their meanings into context without necessarily knowing the fullness of what those words mean, right? Hey, Kenya, darling, how are you? So I looked up the word resilient. I looked up the word resilient, and it said the capacity to recover quickly from difficulty 
and then the word toughness was behind it. And it also said spring back into shape. Now, how many of you feel like you're pretty resilient? Put me in the comments if you feel that you're pretty resilient. For me, when I read though that definition um, and I saw the capacity to recover quickly, I thought about different situations in my life that I'd recovered from. <clears throat> I remember one, um, I was working in a uh, Raleigh-Durham area and it was really my first time in my adult life, I think I was maybe 22, 23, where I really was doing things on my own. I had my own place. It was the first Christmas that I was able to really buy gifts for other people in the family. Um, I was earning good revenue. I probably spent, you know, about uh, to a fault. Yes, Kenya. I probably spent about a thousand dollars, which, you know, I'm not telling you how much to spend on your Christmas shopping and Christmas gifts, but I didn't have children. I didn't have a husband. It was just me. And it felt absolutely amazing. And I remember uh, maybe two or three days, no, it was the 20th of December. So it was about five days before Christmas. I left to go to the mall to get the last few gifts that I was getting. And then I was going home to visit my mom. And when I came back, my apartment had caught on fire. So there was a huge home that had been renovated and each uh, level of the home was an actual apartment. And I had the, the whole top third floor. So it was the largest of that space that had been renovated really nice. I was just really um, in a great space in my life. And I remember, you know, my apartment catching on fire. I had about a thousand dollars in a book and then all of my gifts, all of that stuff just gone. And so that was one of the times that I had to be resilient. It, it was transitional for me, but I don't remember doing a lot of stressing about it. I don't know if it was because I was so young and I didn't know that I need to be stressing because I was pretty much starting all over. Um, hey, Edie, uh, C. Phillips, good morning. Um, I don't know if that's what it was, but I do remember being resilient during that time. Um, I also remember um, this, well, this is not so far in the past, but I was previously married for 14 years. And in 2007, I went through a divorce. So prior to the divorce, so about in 2011, I believe, uh, my ex-husband and I separated for about two and a half years. Now, at the time that we separated, I was ready for him to go and he was ready to go. You know, we were going to divorce. So um, reconciliation wasn't a thought of mine. You know, we were just kind of waiting out the separation. And it was during that time that I began um, spending time. Well, I was already in prayer, children, because I don't know if you know, but a, a relationship does not work and they'll send you to the Lord. A marriage that's not working will send you to God. But um, during that time of prayer, God began to have me focusing on, you know, marriage and what marriage really was. The role of the husband, the role of the wife, the role of the in-laws, my role as a parent, you know, all of that stuff. I was studying like specifically um, God's view on, you know, what marriage was. And it was at that time that you know, for whatever reason, when my ex-husband and I sat down to talk about what the terms of the divorce were, we both began to share some of the things that we had done wrong. <clears throat> we were reading this book on divorce, you know, how to go about it or whatever. And it was some things in the book that made us um, realize that there were some things that we just had not tried. And so in that, we ended up um, reconciling for about maybe a year and a half and then it, it you know it just wasn't um it wasn't lining up and so <clears throat> one of the things that really uh stood out for me were was the fact that God hated divorce right so those were things that I was reading and sometimes our spiritual understanding as believers if you are believers I believe that the lack of well, gosh knows it says it in the word, but the lack of understanding is one of the reasons that we perish. 
And so many times we are taking on the thoughts and the opinions of people before us without having God's full understanding of what he desires for our life, even what different scriptures mean. Um, I learned that scripture has uh, over 400 realms of understanding. So it's we can never know the fullness of the word. But of course, definitely that is a space that I remember having to be resilient in. Now, I do want to say that um, I also learned a lot about what being in toxic situations do to your life and your business. So when we think about long suffering, I see so many women um, who still want, you know, their two family homes or their children to be in, in the home with both of their parents. Um, maybe they had an idea of marriage all their life. And, you know, sometimes the, the, the strength that we are using is is actually from a space of suffering and settling that's for a whole another broadcast but i went there because i was thinking about resilience and how you know even after you know divorce from a marriage of 14 years i have transitioned from owning a physical bu building to creating a career that i work from home and have replaced my income and able to take care of my daughter and help a lot of people um, around the world. And so, you know, packing my home, moving to a new city, putting my daughter in a completely new school and starting over required a measure of resilience. But what has stood out for me the most is in, in each and every time that life has flipped on me, I coached myself. Someone put that in the comments. Each and every time life has flipped on me, put I coached myself in the comments. And as I'm working with uh, clients, so I am a business coach and mentor, transformational growth strategist to women service-based business owners. And I am a license, uh, not licensed because there's no licensing for uh, life coaching, but I am a certified life coach. And my certification, oh, you're welcome, dear. You are so welcome. My certification for life coaching is founded in, in what's called NLP. And I'll, I'll explain more about what that is um, as I move forward on this morning. But as I, you know, was in training for uh, life coaching, I realized that much of what I was learning were things that I had already done. Now, I'm not saying that the certification didn't help me because it did greatly. I believe that in every situation, there is always something that you can take from it, um, some direction or, or something that's going to help you move forward progressively if you are open to it, if you're looking for it. One of the worst things that we can say is, I already know that. Um, even when I look back on to my marriage, one of our downfalls within the marriage was I already know that. And what I mean was we both had our ideas of what marriage was supposed to look like. My ex wasn't raised by his parents, and so he wasn't in a home where marriage even existed. And I, my, my mother and father did raise me until I was 12. But it wasn't necessarily like an ideal marriage either, right? And so, so, so often we take on these opinions of other people or other situations without having full understanding, and it, and it impacts our expectation. For us, it impacted what, um, definitely what my ex felt the role of a wife should be, and so I found myself you know, trying really hard to operate in his idea of the role and still be everything for my business, the community. And, and I think those things are very doable, but people simply have to be on the same page. So anyway, I wanted to share with you guys some things that will help you build up your resilience in your life as you face adversity um, or change or challenges because they're built in, guys. If you're looking for perfection to occur in your life, it does not happen. But I want to tell you that 
sometimes when you say I'm strong, I want you to get to the place where you're not saying you're strong because you continue to keep overcoming the same things, right? Because that's, um, I don't know how much we can really call that a measure of strength. So let's not think about strong as I go through a whole lot of stuff and I get through it. Let's get to the place where we're not going through as many things because we've coached ourselves in the last thing. Do you guys hear me? Let's get to a place where we're not having to say, I'm so strong because I, you know, no matter what you throw at me, I can handle it. Uh, let's get to the place where we're not having to go through so many things because we're making better decisions and better choices. So I said I was going to share with you guys um, what NLP uh, training is. It's the foundational foundation of the type of coaching certification that I have. It's a psychological approach that involves analyzing strategies used by successful individuals and applying them to reach a personal goal. So if you followed me for a long time, you'll notice that I'm very strategic in the things that I share. I talk about strategies and overcoming things. But when I learned what the foundation of the coaching was that I received, I said, wow, this is what I have been doing all along. So I would have a situation that I would face and then I would sit in a moment of awareness. Like, how did this happen? How did this occur? What can I learn from this? And how can I begin walking in a pace that keeps this thing from happening over and over and over again? So the foundation of the certification that I received was definitely in alignment with what I had already been doing. For those of you who are believers, let's think about reading the word. So how many of you have read like a scripture and the first thing you say is, so-and-so needs to hear this. So-and-so needs to hear that. Now, that was me because at the time that I was really, really getting into uh, my relationship with God and reading the scripture, I was going through all of this personal stuff, you know, in my marriage um, and people who were connected to us in different measures. And those were my thoughts. I was like, man, they need to hear this. And it wasn't until I began to take the scripture and really, really apply it to my own life, right? Um, and say, okay, how does this scripture impact you? How can you apply this scripture to your life and make things better or different? And that's when I began seeing diff different results. It wasn't until I began looking at whatever it was, can you guys hear me? Put in the comments if you can still hear me because I noticed my um, live audio that I did the other day. There was a space where there was no audio for like four minutes. I definitely don't want that to happen. If you're watching, if you could do me a favor and just put whether or not you can hear me uh, in the comments, that would be awesome. I'd appreciate that so much. I'm going to keep moving forward just in case you can hear me. And uh, I know that Facebook has a lag, so it's a little slow in, in getting responses. But I realized that I had um, I've been coaching myself. And many of you who are business owners are or will be, well, let's just say are, in leadership positions, right? Now, whether you your title actually says you're in a leadership role, I just believe that everyone is always in a space of leadership where somebody is watching you live out your life. Someone is watching how you operate your business. Someone is looking up to the way you do things and taking clues and taking notes, whether you know it's the greatest thing uh, or not. And I think it's important that as as we are living our lives and, and running our businesses, that we take time to coach ourselves. I'm going to give you guys some specifics on how to be resilient. Remember I said resilient is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulty, um, gain a level of toughness, spring back into shape. That's what the definition is. But we don't want to have to keep recovering. Right. The goal is not to have is to not have to 
continue to keep recovering from things. We want to make better decisions. So in the end, I'm going to give you guys some things that can help you become resilient in your process. When I say coach myself, as I am coaching clients, so I started mainly teaching people about their business. And then I soon learned that they needed more than just business strategies in order to get the results or to see things manifest. So there were some personal growth, personal development, some mindset shifts that needed to happen uh, in the process in order for them to get continued results, right? Not hit or miss, but continued results uh, that were in alignment with where they wanted to head. And it was at that time that I began to completely and fully embrace you know, who I am as, as a brand. So my business is called Renew Full Circle. I uh, founded it in 2012. And in between 2012 and 2019, I kind of shifted away from the concept of the full circle experience. And now I'm back full circle because I understand the importance of it. When I first came online, I wasn't really sure how to attract my perfect people based on what it was that I did. But I understand that who I am called to serve, the women want to get their whole life. And what I teach and train in the full circle experience, the concept of abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building impacts the lives of the women that I work with. They manifest at a higher level. Their life is more fulfilling. And you know what they are doing is more impactful when I teach from that particular space. So I wanted to just, I wanted to be clear or help you guys to find clarity about what resilience really is so that you don't feel like long suffering in something that's not working for you is a measure of strength, right? Now there are times where you got to stick and stay, but being able to discern what that is. So first of all, stretching and a, a situation that stretches you and the situation that breaks you are two different things. That's one of the easiest ways to say, is this something I need to continue to move forward in? Because something that stretches you and compels you to become better, grow, expand, is completely different from something that breaks you. And so only you can really define whether this thing you know, that you're setting out to do or that you're being long-suffering in or you're sticking and staying in is something that's stretching you or something that's breaking you. And oftentimes, if it's a toxic situation, it diminishes your judgment. Toxic situations diminish your judgment. So here's some things about resilience. One of the things that I recognized whenever I face a challenge or even face challenges now is my mindset is always, this is not the end of the world. This is not the end of the world. The second thing I said, I am moving forward. I am not moving backwards. I am moving forward. I am not moving backwards. Now, many people get stuck here because they don't have a clear vision of where they desire their life and their business to head. So without a clear vision of where you desire your life and your business to head, moving forward, is it doesn't even make sense because the question is always, where, what am I moving forward to? This is why I talk about the importance of having a vision and creating a future that's bigger than your past because when adversity comes or things that you have to overcome or get through, you always have a space in your mind that or a direction for moving forward. The third thing is to look for opportunities in that moment, in those moments of adversity, to discover yourself even more. So that's what I did whenever I face you know, uh, a difficulty or, or challenge, I always sit and say, you know, what can I learn about myself in this process? What can I observe and become more aware of about how I think, how I make choices, what decisions I made, what decisions I didn't make, and what do I actually need that I don't have? Who has what I need that I don't have that's going to fill in these gaps or these voids that actually caused me to, you know, end up in the situation that I'm in. So I look for opportunities 
uh, to discover myself even more. These are ways for you guys to be resilient. Um, then I also take decisive action. Take decisive action. One of the greatest things you'll do as a leader of your life and your business or whatever role you play in your business is learn to make decisive, take decisive action. So many people sit undecided for years. Some of you have been watching me for three, four years now, and you haven't made that decision. I want to work with her. She has what I need. Take decisive action. Many of you would be um, two to three times ahead in your process had you made some of the decisions that you needed to make two to three years ago, whether it was working with me or something you needed to do in your life, just think about how much further ahead you would be uh, with the ability to um, take deci decisive action, right? Take decisive action. Another thing that I do in times of um, a transition or adversity, I find a space where I can help other people. Listen, the entire time that I was transitioning from owning a brick and mortar business to consulting full time online, I was going through the things in my marriage and divorce and court and attorney fees and all of that stuff. I was going through that uh, toxic, you know, situation the entire time that I was rebuilding um, my life and, and changing how I operated and the way that I've changed has allowed me to move to a completely different city and pretty much earn revenue without having to trade my time all the time for uh, money or being able to earn revenue right in my home. So I'm so glad that I was able to stay focused on the vision during that adversity because, you know, this is how it ended up. I needed it. I moved to a completely different city and wasn't um, tied to how I would earn revenue to take care of my daughter you know, in the process. And but so what I did was I found a space that I could help other people. When you can get in a space where you can take the um, focus off of everything that's not going right in your situation, it helps you to progress forward. This is why I'm a firm believer in affirmations. So this was also a time that I began creating affirmations. If you've seen me before, I shared these index cards where I began to write out all of the things that I desired in affirming statements. And I began to share that particular process with my private clients. <clears throat> and it just changed their thinking, which changed their emotions, which changed their actions, which changed their results. And that is actually what led to me creating the affirmation guide that I now have um, because I saw a need for people to change what they were speaking, saying, and thinking in order to change their life. So oftentimes we're in this, when we're in a situation, like if our business isn't going well, the thoughts and things that we continue to say is, my business isn't going well, this is going slow, this isn't working out the way that I plan. And it's difficult when that is the thought process to head in a different direction. So I knew not only from my own personal experience, remember I said I coach myself first. So when I got my certification for life coaching in 2016, I had already been applying some of the things that people have been studying about the brain and you know how we think and speak for years. I had been applying it because it was there were tools for me to get out of you know the situations that I found myself in. And so my, my note cards, hey, Russ, how are you with those affirmations helped me so much. And I created the affirmation guide because I wanted to give you all a tool that you could use every single day. It helps to build up that resilience that you need. It gives you like personalized visions for your life. The, the guide is broken down into six areas of your life. So change for me meant I not only had to look at how my business was functioning, I had to look at every area of my life, my health and wellness, my career and finances, my home, family and relationships, my, the social and cultural aspect of my life, my learning and self-improvement. I had to begin to look at those areas. I call them the six elements of life alignment and assess how those areas were going because all of them impacted my results in my business. All of them impacted my results in my business. 
So I wanted to think of a way that I could share it with people um, who want even my, my actual private clients as a way to build foundational things and as a way to begin coaching themselves through uh, growing their life and growing their business. So the affirmation guide is broken down into those six elements of life alignment. There are affirming statements. There's space for you to create your own affirming statements. There is direction and instruction on how to apply the guide to your life so that you can begin manifesting at a higher, more abundant level in your life so that you have a picture or even a vision for each of those six areas of your life. Now, the thing about this is I've been teaching from those six areas for about eight years. And it wasn't until recently that I decided to, you know, take that piece. It, it actually came from a vision course that I began teaching about eight years ago. And to take that portion of it and put it in a guide that was easily accessible to you. So the guide actually comes to you through ebook form. So on your device, you're able to scroll and read it, you know, like you're reading an ebook. And what I did as a bonus is I made a link so that you can download a printable copy. And on the copy, it leaves space after each element of life that you're looking at, that you wanted to affirm higher, greater, more abundance in and create your own specifics. So you can put the income amount. I believe that many of our prayers are answered because we aren't specific enough, right? We're so general with what it is that we're asking. And so it leaves space in the downloadable workbook for you to be able to tweak the, the affirmation statements and make them more personal and make them your own. But I wanted you guys to know that you can use the affirmation guide to coach yourself. I think it's important. Um, Paulette Reese, good morning. How are you? I think it's important that if you are thinking about even creating an online course for someone, uh, if you're thinking about training, teaching, educating, or coaching, I think it's important that you coach yourself. Uh, first <clears throat> or or during uh, the the process of of learning to coach teach or train I think it's important that you coach yourself first in those areas that you're wanting to uh, share with others so I gave you guys some things that you can do as it relates to being resilient um, and I want you guys to think about this too though because the definition says to recover quickly. I believe that the greatest measure of growth is not necessarily to spring back to where you were. I think whenever you face a, a trial or adversity or a challenge, the goal should not be to spring back to where you were. Remember, the goal is to move forward. The goal is to come out of that situation greater than you were when you started. So now I think that's a little flaw in, in the definition because my goal, if I'm um, facing something, if I've properly taken the time and look for opportunities to discover myself even more, I should not bounce back to where I was. I should be greater, stronger, doing more than I was when I first uh, experienced whatever the challenge may be. The challenge for you may be something that you need to learn in your business to make it better, to earn more revenue, to get in front of more people, to help people be a bigger impact, whatever your goal is, uh, and that's causing challenging challenges for you. I don't feel the goal should be to get back to where you were, right? Because that means you're not moving forward. I think the goal should be, the recovery should be to at least be back at a space that you are maintaining and progressing forward. So that's my take on today for you guys, letting you know that before I came to coach you, I coached myself first. And I think it's important that you all do the same. You take opportunities to coach yourself, to think about your thinking, to think about your decisions, to apply principles and the memes that you're seeing on Facebook and the scripture and the word to your own life and get results. Coach yourself first. That is my take on this morning. You guys, if you enjoy, tap the screen for hearts. Show me a little love. Let me know this registered for you. And please be sure 
to share the broadcast out with someone else. I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry, business coach and mentor to women service-based business owners and also those who aspire to train, educate, teach. Um, I am a transformational growth strategist, helping you brand, build, and profit in your business. I use a, um, I teach from a three-point perspective of abundance mindset, uh, personal growth, and business building, helping women create futures bigger than their past, create more time freedom while on their path to financial freedom. I believe your business should fund your lifestyle and not run your lifestyle. Have a super, super amazing day. Peace.